We have some first and length change measurements from a tension test on 7075T651 aluminum. In part A, we are going to calculate corresponding values of engineering stress and strain and we will display these values on a stress strain plot. In part B, we will determine the yield strength for a plastic strain offset of 0.2%. And finally, in part C, we will determine what tension force is required to cause yielding in a bar with a diameter of 20 mm. But this bar will be made of the same material. And then we will compare this value with the 9.07 mm diameter specimen. So we can start now. We know that sigma is equal to force over area. Since area is equal to pi times r square, in our case the area will be equal to 64.61 times 10 to the power of minus 6 meter squares. So we can start calculating the stresses now. We know that sigma zero will be equal to zero because the force is zero. But sigma one will be equal to 7.22 kilonewtons over the area, which is 64.61 times 10 to the power of minus six meters squares. And this will be 111.75 MPa. For sigma 2, we will take the third stress, third force, and it is 14.34 over the area again, and we will have 221.94 MPa. For sigma 3, we will take this force, which is 21.06 over again the area, and it will give 325.95 MPa. We will do the same for all stresses. And then we will calculate the strains. We know that strain is equal to change in length over the initial length. And we know the initial length is 50.8 millimeters. So we can say that Zero point zero zero sixteen, and we will do the same procedure for all strains. We calculated the corresponding values of engineering stress and strain. Also, I already drew the stress strain plot. You can see that when stress is zero, the strain is also zero. When the stress is 111.75 MPa, the strain becomes 0 0.0016. When the stress is 221.94 MPa, the strain becomes 0 0.0032 and it goes on. So we can move to part B. 
We would like to determine the yield strength for a plastic strain offset of 0.2%. To find this yield strength, we will draw a parallel line to the curve starting from 0.2% strain. When we draw this line, we can see that sigma O, which is the yield strength, is approximately 530 MPa. Because it comes later than uh, sigma 6, which is 527.78. And it is smaller than the sigma 7, so it is approximately 530 MPa. So when we move to part C, for diameter is equal to 20 millimeters, the yield strength, which is equal to PO over A, becomes 530 MPa and P in this case becomes 530 times pi over 2 times 20 millimeter square and this will give 166.5 kilonewtons. On the other hand, when D is equal to 9.07 millimeters, sigma 0 will be again P over A and again it will be 530 MPa. P0 will be 530 times pi over 4 times 9.07 millimeter square. And we will have P is equal to 34.24 kilonewtons. We can see that P for D is equal to 20 millimeters is larger than P for D is equal to 9.07 millimeters. The reason why they are different is the equation P over A. We know that the yield strength is a constant value. So P over A always should give the same yield strength value for different areas and different forces. So we, so we have a bigger area. The force to cause yielding should become larger too. This is why force for yield 20 millimeter diameter is larger than the force for 9 millimeter diameter.